I've got a little model with six inputs, which incidentally, completely free to download. Those are perfect settings. I want to record those. And I want those available on this drop down list here so that I can select them again. I can now record these. And it takes advantage of a built in Excel feature called scenarios. So you go to data, what if scenario manager. You can see there's my current ones. Now I'm going to add a scenario. Let's call it Millionaire Clan. Yeah, created by it for Excel. I don't really need that. OK, so that's my Millionaire Plan. That's the settings. Hit OK. But the key thing is, right, now my Millionaire Plan's in the drop down list. How did that happen? I just want to show you how I've set this up. On the Developer tab, don't have a Developer tab. Click on Customize Quick Access Toolbar, More Commands, Customize the Ribbon, tick Developer tab, and hit OK. Right, you've got it. Go into Design Mode, Insert an Active X drop down box or combo box. And I'm just going to draw one over here at random while we're using this rather than sort of data validation lists or, or the other type of drop down box form control. But the reason is we need to make use of the event driven processes that run off of this box, which makes it quite useful because we're going to programmatically populate that list only when it's clicked. And the way that we're going to do that is it's going to go look at all the scenarios that are built into this spreadsheet and add their names to the drop down list. And then when it's clicked, show that scenario. So it's effectively a little macro that's doing automatically what we just did here. So it's the equivalent of going, right, what if analysis, scenario manager, picking that one, hitting show, hitting close. It's effectively a program that does that for you whenever you click on this. So that's what we're going to do. Right, delete that one. And I'll show you how to set this one up. Let's go categorized. What are our key things here? Simple stuff. I've changed the border color to black. And I've put a border on it, single border on it. The special effect I've changed to flat because that looks better in a worksheet and it gives you more room for your font. And very important, this one actually, the style needs to be a drop down list because otherwise anyone can type into that anything they like. And if that scenario doesn't exist, the code's going to a wobbler and uh, we don't want to have to put error handling in the code or anything like that probably on miscellaneous yeah miscellaneous do this must be empty list field range because otherwise it's going to try and populate whatever's in there and we don't need a link cell either but just need to make sure that is blank because we're going to programmatically fill this list and that's something I happen to know generates an error if there's anything in that box. The font, incidentally, you tend to have to knock it down one from whatever your standard row font size is. OK, so that's about it for that setup. So if we right click on here and view code, you can see the code that I put into it. This is free, you know, download this, copy and paste it in. So I'm going to recreate this code from scratch. Well, let's comment it out. Do that a second, and then I'm going to insert a bit of space and I'll show you how you would create it from scratch. So, if we go combo box one and uh, drop button click, so this is the click event. What am I going to do? Well, the main thing we need to do is populate this list when it's clicked and then show the scenario nice and simple. Would be great if only it blooming worked for some strange reason. The way Excel executes this event is when the drop down box is clicked, it drops the list down. Fine. When you pick something, it drops the list up and that is treated as another click event and runs a macro again. <laughs> Which means that if in this code you say, oh, change the list to this new list, they click on it. You get the list. Looks great. You pick the list and then all it does is blank it and repopulate it again. And so you never get to actually choose any item from the list. You look like you choose it and then it just goes blank again. So we need to detect whether the list is coming down, going up. What I do in order to do that, little hidden cell under there, 
put it anywhere but the key thing is give it a name range name i called it n tag so just type pick on any cell for example and just type in here as long as you click enter it'll register that name and that way if i kind of insert a row up here for example this whole thing will still work because we reference the named range of the cell rather than the cell j6 or whatever it was right so what we can do is uh, every time we run the code times that by negative one when we click down populates the list that number changes to negative one so then when the list closes the code runs again that tag is negative one so we can make sure that it only populates the list when it's number one and it shows scenarios when it's minus one and as long as we're always times in that number by negative one and no one comes in and deletes it or anything everything's going to work fine let's put that in first and the way we do that is we just say range n tags value equals one then do that else we're going to do something else and if so that's our basic structure and then what we're going to do is at the bottom here we're going to say that that equals itself times minus one so i'll just put um list down there as a comment just so that we see what's happening list up and then that is uh change the tag so that way as long as we've set our initial condition as one when we click down whatever code we put in uh, here will run when it goes up because the value will be minus one it'll run that and then that little statement there will keep flipping it between one and minus one so what are we going to do when the list comes down we're going to populate it with all the scenarios that are built into the spreadsheet how are we going to do that well i'm going to just cheat a second and copy the code so we're going to clear the current list combo box one dot clear and obviously it's combo box one because it's called combo box one how do you find out what it's called uh design mode click on there right click properties if you go alphabetical it's the first thing the name so we clear it then what do we do all right it's just the magic we're going to search through all the scenarios on the active sheet so we do that by creating a little for next loop so for each i've called it o scenario it doesn't matter what you call it you call it x if you like so for each scenario in the active sheet scenario add the name of it to the combo box right now bear in mind we've just cleared the combo box if we didn't clear the combo box, this combo box would just get longer and longer and longer every time we clicked on it. So that's what happens when you click down. What happens when you click back up? Well, we need to show our show our scenario. The main code is this. Let's just put that in a second here. Right. So we're going to say when the list goes up, show the scenario. So the active sheet dot scenario, the scenario name which is just whatever value is now in the combo box dot show. If I was to run that, there's a possible way we could get an error. What if I say, actually, I don't want to choose anything. Oh, error. I debug on that. You can see it's because the value in the combo box is nothing. And it's trying to show a scenario with no name. It's not going to be able to do it. So we just need to trap that error. And the way we do that is if that is not equal to nothing, then do it, then show it and by default, because if it is equal to nothing, it won't do anything. That'll work. That's our little macro. Let's reset that to one. Let's go for a 10% growth, right? Yeah, you can see that's working. Millionaire plan, yeah, that's working. So let's uh, think about adding another scenario now. Check it's all working. That's our revised millionaire plan. So I'm gonna say, save that as a new scenario what if scenario manager add it new million plan uh, create it hit okay uh, close key thing is does it appear in the drop down yes download the spreadsheet and look at the code just a quick warning that one thing in the code if you've got a model which you probably have that's spanning lots of different sheets it's worth just before the combo box code putting the sheet name so for example you just put sheet one dot combo box and 
That way, if you've got another combo box on another sheet called combo box one, it's just going to avoid a bit of confusion. So a bit of a little bit of best practice there. But other than that, it's going to work fine on multi-sheet models. You can have numerous items in these scenarios. You can have it changing cells all over the place, but they do rely on all your inputs being on the same sheet. If they're not currently on the same sheet, either move them to the same sheet or have them linking back to something on a single sheet. I hope that's helpful. If you want to know much more about drop down boxes and how you can do really clever stuff with them, I've got loads of videos out on this now. Check those out. Have a look round up for Excel and I'll see you soon.